God who is. We worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors. He parted the raging sea. My God, he holds the victory. All right. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. If we won't be quiet, we shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. If we won't be quiet, we shout out your praise. God who saves, we sing to the God who always makes a way. I like this. He hung upon that cross, he rose up from that grave. My God, still rolling stones away. There's joy in the house of the Lord, there's joy in the house of the Lord today. If we won't be quiet, we shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. If we won't be quiet, we shout out your praise. We shout out your praise. Shout out your praise. Yeah. I like this. We were the beggars. Now we're royalty, we are prisoners, now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. All right, sing it again. We were the beggars, now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted. Redeemed by His grace, let the house of the Lord sing praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We'll shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. we shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today, and we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place, and we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. We shout out your praise. We shout out your praise. Turn around and smile at somebody and say good morning. I count on one thing. The same God that never fails will not fail me now. You won't fail me now in the way. The same God that's never late working all things out, working all things out, and yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley, and yes, I will bless your name, oh yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy, and all Yes, I will bless your 
nothing can stand against. I choose to praise, to glorify, glorify the name of all names. Cause nothing can stand against. I choose to praise. I choose to praise, to glorify, glorify the name of all names. Nothing can stand against. And yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. And yes, oh, yes, yes I, I will, will sing for joy when my heart is heavy and all my days. Yes, I will. Yes, I will lift you high. In the lowest valley, and yes, I will bless your name. Yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy and all my days. For yes, I will all my days. For yes, I will. we face. You're always there, God. Your strength helps us. So be with us, God, I pray. Let us know you're the God who changes. You're the God who does the impossible. You're the God who moves mountains, who calms seas. You're the God who changes everything. Show us 
something from him today. Lift your hands all across this place. Lift your hands up all across this place. You need something from God today. You need a healing. You need fear to be disappearing from your life. You need a touch from God today. Just lift your hands, Father. We lift our hands to the one who can do the impossible. There is nothing too great for you, so we lift our hands and surrender. We lift our hands and knowing that God acknowledging you of the only one that can do the impossible. So Lord, I pray, change everything. In these hands that are raised, God, you see them. You not just, God, more importantly, you know their place. You know what their struggles are. You know the fears they're facing. You know, God, the hurt that's in their life. 
So Jesus, would you right now just move upon this place, move upon those individuals, let them know that you're with them. You are the saving God. Can we sing that chains fall? Let's just sing that as a proclamation, chains fall. You change everything in lives here. Continue to speak to our hearts. Continue to encourage our lives through your word today as we learn about your healing, healing grace. Lord, thank you for this time of worship, this time in your presence. In Jesus' name, I said, amen, amen. Crazy grace. Turn to your neighbor and say crazy. Anybody know somebody crazy? Raise your hand. You know somebody who's kind of crazy, kind of off the wall crazy? Yeah? Crazy grace for a crazy world is the series that we've been doing for the last several weeks, learning about different aspects of God's grace and what he does in our life. Uh, the grace of God is absolutely at times, unexplainable, like it's hard to explain the grace of God. And so I've been taking, and each week I've been talking about different aspects of God's grace. I talked about his saving grace, how he saves us from the things we do wrong in our lives. He saves us from our sin. He saves us from so many different uh, things that try to drag us down in life. And then I talked about the liberating grace of God, that he gives us freedom, freedom to live out the walk with God and the walk with Christ. I talked about guilt versus grace. What's the difference between the two and how we can discover the difference and how we can live in the joy and the grace of God. I talked about God's sustaining grace last Sunday, how no matter what we go through in life, he holds us he help, comes under us, supports us, and sustains us through the most tragic times in life. Um, today, I want to talk about God's healing grace. God's healing grace. Not a single person in this room, young or old, it doesn't matter where you're at, not one of you are going to sail through life untouched by pain. Not a one of you. Anybody in here in your life ever experienced any kind of pain whatsoever? Raise your hands if you have had pain in your life. Okay, good. So I've already talked with everyone in the room. Pain is, is those, is those, are those things that kind of touch us, that move us, that, that, that can take us to places of, uh, uh, of emotional trauma. Uh, most of the pain statistically that comes in our life are actually, it comes from rejection. When we're rejected by somebody, there's a lot of pain that's carried by that rejection. Rejection of your parents. Uh, maybe it's rejection of uh, a spouse or an ex-spouse. Or maybe it's rejection of your kids. Rejection of your peers. Some way, somehow, we all experience different kinds of pain. And pain of rejection is a very huge part of this. In fact, some of you sitting here today, whether it's 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years ago, remember an incident took place on the playground, maybe where you were rejected by somebody, and it hurt and it cut deep because all of us have experienced the pain of rejection. Here's what scripture says, Psalm 147, verse 3. It says, God heals our broken heart, our broken hearted, the brokenhearted, and binds up their wounds. God has an amazing way of healing us. How does God heal us? How does God heal us? Turn to your neighbor and say, how does God heal us? Like, I don't know. How does God heal us? God heals us. Here is very simple. God heals us by the changing of our mind. God does something miraculous by he's able to 
rewire our minds to think a bad thought or a negative thought or a, 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 a thought that's destructive to a way that's good. He changes how we see ourselves by seeing us the way that God sees us. Here's what Romans says. Romans 12 says, let God transform you into a new person by, here's how, changing your mind. Your mind has to be changed. Scripture says, as a person thinks, there they go. Your thought life determines the direction of your real life. If you have negative thoughts in your life, your life will tend to go negative directions. If you think you're a loser, you're always going to wind up being a loser. If you think everybody is, you're being a victim and everybody's picking on you and you're chewing Charlie Brown mindset and everybody's picking on me, why are you picking on me? You're always going to be the victim. You're always going to be victimized. If you think of yourself as ugly, when you look at, at a mirror or compare it to somebody else, you're going to walk around and have the idea that you are ugly because your mind has told you so. If you compare yourself to other people and how they dress and how they act and how they behave and you don't, you don't measure up, then therefore you will always be negative. Here's belief determines your behavior. I'm going to say that again. You may want to write that down in your notes. Your belief determines your behavior. If you, and the same is true on the other side. If you think you're a winner and you are positive about your, you look in the mirror, you like what you see, you feel good about yourself, you have positive things because your behavior, your beliefs determine your behavior. See, so many times we have false ideas and these false ideas lead us to lies. It's fake news. Fake news, a big thing today. The fake news is the lies that you have told yourself that you have believed as truth inside you. Fake news. It's kind of like you go to a carnival. If you've ever been to a carnival and uh, they have the fun house. And in the fun house, they have the mirrors. You guys know all the mirrors. And they have mirrors that are shaped different, and they have different rows to them. And what happens when you go up to the mirror? It distorts what you look like, right? For example, uh, my favorite mirror is the mirror that makes me look skinny and tall. I like that mirror. I wish I had that mirror in my house. Uh, the mirror I hate is the one that makes me look short and fat. I'm like, I'm already there. What do I need a mirror to do that for? Right? The, the, the mirrors distort the perception. The perception is that you're this way when the reality is that's not it. And that's really what I want to talk to you guys about today is that God has this miracle, uh, a miraculous way of healing and smashing the mirror that has lied to you and told you, a, sold you a bill of lies, a fake news that is not true about your identity and who you are in Christ. The fact and reality is many of you sit here today and whether you are 20 or 30 or, six, or 50 or 60, many of you sit here today and you're still the little child that was hurt when you were younger by something that someone said or how someone treated you, and that pain has resonated in your life. It hurts. So I want to give you five things that God says about you, five things, write this in your notes, five things God says about you versus what the world would try to say about you, okay? Here's the first one I want to give you, five things that God says about you to defeat the lies and break the mirror of distortion in your life. First one is this. You are accepted. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm accepted. I'm accepted. No matter who you are, no matter where you've been, no matter what you've done, no matter what your parents said about you, no matter what your spouse has said about you, no matter what your friends have said about you, either good or bad, the fact is, at the end of the day, we have been accepted by 
God and by all that he brings to us. See, in our world, we work for acceptance. For example, all of you got dressed today. Thank you for doing that. I appreciate that. All of you got your clothes on, and all of you at some point, well, I should say most of you. Some of you haven't checked your hair lately, but most of you looked in the mirror, and you did a once-over, and you said, okay, I can pull this off today. Or, not that, get something else. Three outfits later, 30 outfits later, somehow you figured it out, and you made it, and you were only 15 minutes late. Good job. All of us, we have a certain desire to be accepted by people around us. No matter who you are, I look around at some of you, and I know some of you are like, well, I don't care. I'm a tough guy. I don't really care who likes me. Lie, fake news, you do care. You care. If you're married, you better care, right? You better care that they like you or not. There is... We all do things to kind of be accepted. And in this world of superficial, <laughs> fake, fake book, think about it. What do we post on fake book? Only what's good, right? Because why? We want to be accepted by the people, our friends. Big air quotes on friends, right? Who are friends? Friends are who say happy birthday to you. And you don't even know who it is. That's your friend on Facebook. That's about the superficial level that it's at, right? We all want to be accepted. So we think about so many times, maybe it's a different thing for you versus others. Some it's how you dress. Some it's the way you look. It's your body shape. Some of you it's, uh, it's uh, cars you drive. It's houses you live in. Neighborhoods you're living on. Um, jobs that you have. Positions that you have at the job that you have. We all have this desire that we want to be accepted and we will do whatever it takes to find that acceptance. And so I want to encourage you today to understand that you are already accepted by God. Remember growing up, somebody wanted you to do something, what did they say? They say, I dare you. That was nothing. I double dare you. It's getting serious now, right? No, no, no. They pull out the big one. I triple dog dare you. I don't know who the dog is, but I'm doing it. The dog just put me over the top, right? Because we try to be accepted, try to fit in. We try to get into the mold that people have. Well, understand this. How many of you in here are perfect today? Any perfect people in the house today? Let me see your hands. Any perfect people in the house? Any perfect over here? Any perfect people? Any perfect? Marilyn, did you raise your hand? Are you perfect, Marilyn? She's pretty close to perfect, if you know Marilyn. If she does anything wrong, she just doesn't remember it and doesn't know what she's doing. <laughs> lots of grace, lots of grace for Marilyn. If you haven't been lost by Marilyn on a trip, you haven't been lost in life. <laughs> None of us are perfect, right? But it seems like this desire to be accepted is almost like we have to become the perfect image of what somebody else thinks we should be, and then we'll be accepted. Well, here's the deal, guys. Jesus was perfect, and he was not accepted. He was rejected. He, was, he didn't work for the approval of people. He worked for the approval of God. He was perfect, but he was not accepted. He was rejected. But in God, through Christ, we are accepted. Here's what Romans 15, 7 says. It says, Christ has accepted you. We did not choose God. God chose us. He accepted us before we ever were. You guys remember picking teams on the playground growing up? Anybody remember the horror of getting teams picked? Anybody with me? You remember picking teams? Come on, help me out. The trauma of team picking, right? Horrible. I mean, bullying started right there. I mean, if it was a fast game where you had to run, Tubby Kev was not picked. I was just like, please just only be last before the girl. This, look, I don't want to be standing here with a girl and the girl gets picked before me. Please, God, help me. Now, kickball, that was my game because I had a lot of mass. I can really oomph it. 
As you can tell, team picking on the playground caused some trauma in my life. I need healing today. <laughs> All of us have different stories of places where we've been rejected or places where we have not been accepted. We strive to please. We strive to become who others want us to become at times instead of who God has created us to be. Well, what I want you to just relax in is know this, over 6 billion people on the planet, there are going to be a few people that will not like you or accept you, but just remember that God always accepts you. First thing is remember that God accepts you. Second thought is this, I want you to remember, is that you are valuable. Turn to your neighbor and say, I'm valued. I'm valued. Not your net worth, your self-worth. Listen, not your net worth, your self-worth. Net worth is how much you own. Self-worth is if you own nothing, you still have a secure identity in God and in Christ. Not your net worth, your self-worth. And two things determine the value of an item. Here they are. The first one is who owns it. The second one is how much someone's willing to pay for it. For example, if I had a 1978 station wagon with wood grain down the sides, and I owned it, and I said, give me $3,000 for this 1978 station wagon, which I owned and I had growing up. It was awesome. You would say, you're crazy. But if I said to you, Elvis Presley owned this station wagon, you'd be like, I'll give you $10,000 for it. Why? Because he owned it versus me, right? Exactly. Because it's about who owned it. My tennis shoes, you wouldn't give me $3 for but if Michael Jordan was up here and he said, I'll sell my tennis shoes to the highest bidder, you'd be cracking out $300,000, $3,000. Why? Because Jordan is wearing them. I don't care if they smell. They got the sweat of Jordan. Because why? He owns them, right? It's all about who owns the item that declares its value. So here is what Scripture says, 1 John 4.4. 4, you belong to God. If you've accepted Christ as your personal Savior, you belong to God. Jesus Christ, when you accept his free gift of salvation, it says you have been bought and paid for by Christ, so you belong to Christ. You belong to God. The second determination is what someone's willing to pay for it. For example, if I have a 200, if I have a house and I say I want $250,000 for it, but I can only find one person to give me $150,000 for it. How much is my house worth? $150,000. Because that's what someone's willing to pay for. It. If I have a baseball card and I say it's worth $500, but I can only give somebody to give me five bucks for it, it's worth five bucks, right? So the value is only determined by what someone's willing to pay for it. Here's what 1 Corinthians 7 says. You have been bought and paid for with Christ, so you belong to him, and he paid the highest price by giving his life on the cross. You are accepted. You are valued. Number three, you are lovable. You are loved by God. So many of us have broken hearts. We've been betrayed. We've been hurt. We've been taken advantage of in life by a boyfriend, girlfriend. Uh, maybe a parent has hurt us in some way, but the Bible says that no matter what you do, no matter what you go through, you are loved by God. Here's two ways God loves you. God loves you consistently. He does not change, and he loves you unconditionally without ever changing his condition. God loves you con consistently. He loves you unconditionally. There's nothing you can do to break the love of God. There's no way that you can ever uh, have God say, God, don't love me. He always will love you because you are his creation. You're accepted, you're valued, and you are loved by God. Number four, you are forgivable. You are forgivable. Not only are you accepted, not only are you valued and lovable, but you are forgivable. This this idea that you can do anything beyond God's forgiveness is a total lie. It's fake. God can forgive anywhere you've been, anything you've done. 
Isaiah 43, 25, I am God who forgives your sins, and I do this because I, here's why, I will not hold your sins against you. No matter where you go, God does not carry grudges. God does not hold out any, any ill will to you. People might, but God does not. And people, hear this, people do not represent the forgivable power of God. It's far beyond our understanding. See, so many times we forget Ephesians 1, 4, through what Christ would do for us. God decided to make us holy in his eyes. Without a single fault, we stand before him unwavered with Un, I'm sorry, we stand before him covered with his love. We are accepted by God. We are valued by God. We are loved by God. And we are forgiven by God. No matter where you've been, he can forgive you wherever you're at. And number five, here's number five, the last one I want to give you today. I am capable because of God. I am accepted I am valuable, I am lovable, I am forgivable, and I am capable to do whatever God has called me to do. Here's what Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, it says, I can do, I have the strength to, for all things in Christ who empowers me. I am ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses my inner strength within me. It says, that is, I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. Another scripture says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. See, there's a cultural epidemic. The cultural epidemic is low self-esteem. I can't do that. I'm not good enough. I can't go to Africa. That's a high call, and I can never do that. I can't be called to be a pastor because of all my past. I can't do ministry, music ministry. I can't help teach kids. I can't, I can't do these things because... Ah, I'm just not there. But I'm here to tell you, you are capable because of what Christ do, did inside of you. See, if we base our security on finances, we can lose them. If we base our identity on possessions, they can burn up tomorrow. If we base our identity on our appearance, well, we get older. Things start to go in places they're not supposed to go. Looks change. No matter how much we try, we grow older and older. If we fear or we try to hold on, we base our security in our spouse. When they're gone, we lose all hope. We lose all security because why? We thought that they were our security. Here's the fact and reality is. We reverse the curse of trying to please people and this low self-esteem. We reverse it by seeing us the way God sees us. How does he see us? We're accepted. We're valued. <laughs> Thank you, God. We're forgivable. We're lovable. And we are, we are completely and totally capable of doing whatever it is God is calling us to. 1 Peter 2.10 says, once you were less than nothing, now you are God's own. Another verse says, may the God of hope, may the God of hope fill you with joy that by the power of the Holy Spirit, your whole life and outlook may radiant with hope. How you think is how you go. Bow your heads with me today. Father, help us evaluate our thought life, the thoughts that lie to us, the thoughts that deceive us, God, help us to be able to come to a place where we understand that, that Jesus, you accept us, you value us, you love us, God, you forgive us, and you make us capable to continue every day walking with you. But God, it starts with our thought life, it starts with how we think starts with the lies that have been told throughout our life and maybe even reinforced throughout our life. Starts with us 
to stop striving to be accepted by others and to settle in your peace that you created us. You know us. You love us exactly where we're at. So, Lord, would you just speak to our hearts today? Would you, God, just do what only you can do in the next few moments of time? Would you heal us? Would you heal our thoughts that are just bad, our, our thoughts that are just corrupt and just wrong, God? Would you heal our emotions, our low self-esteem? In the next few moments of time, be our healer, be our source, be our strength, I pray. You hold my every moment. You call my raging sea. this morning, head bowed, eyes closed, you're here this morning and you struggle with this low self-esteem, you struggle with the idea of who you are in Christ and being accepted by Christ, you struggle with so many different things that come flooding in right there where you're at, would you just head bowed, eyes closed, if you'd be honest today, if you'd be honest today and say, you know, I'm just struggling with my self-esteem, I'm struggling with where I'm at, I'm struggling in life right now with, with my identity and who I'm trying to be, I'm trying to be somebody specific. I'm trying to change and alter who I am because I want to be accepted, but I forget that God, you're the only one that matters. If you're here today, would you raise your hands all across this place? You need God's acceptance. You just want to know God's loving, God's forgiving, his acceptance, his, his value is with you. Just right there, I want to pray for you. Father, help us in a world that's all about self-image, all about how we look and how we present ourselves. God, help us to understand who we are in Christ. Help us understand that, God, your healing grace heals those areas of our lives that are so broken. They heal those places in our life that are so desperate. They heal those places in our lives that, that God, maybe we were hurt when we were young or maybe we were scarred when we were younger. But, God, you do a miracle power and you heal. God, you heal and you heal. So, Lord, I pray from young and old alike that you would be the healing God. You'd be their healer. You'd be their sustainer, and they would know they are accepted, they are valued, they are loved, and they are forgiven, and God capable of doing all that you've called them to do. So, Lord, be their healer and be their strength. I believe that you're my healer. I believe that you.
Take us today, continue to hold us in your hand, continue to remind us all week how your healing grace takes and brings us through. There's nothing impossible for you. Thank you that God, you go with us, you accept us, you love us, you care for us, and you're always there. So Lord, may you just help our minds to not believe the lies and believe the truth of who you say I am. God bless you guys. Have a great day. Thanks for coming today.